Hello, my name is JB Andriasi. I'm a real estate advisor at Nest Seekers International in the Hamptons. I am also a cast member on Netflix's original Million Dollar Beach House. Today, for our first YouTube channel video, we're gonna do a Q&A with our fans and hopefully get some answers that you all been looking for. Let's go. Where did I grow up? So I am lucky enough to have been born and raised in Southampton, New York. Growing up in the Hamptons was actually super cool. A lot of people don't realize that this is a very strong local community. And by local, I mean families and, and people that are out here for 12 months out of the year. I've been away for eight years and have now circled back home. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this community again. I went to college in New Hampshire. So Dartmouth College up in Hanover, New Hampshire, it's like, pushing the, the border of US and Canada, super far north, really, really cold. Met some of the best friends I have in the world that have now like settled all over the country. They're in Miami and LA and Austin, Texas. And some of those guys, you know, are having kids now, which is kind of crazy. It's been nine years since I graduated. So yeah, Dartmouth was always uh, a really big point in my life. Super blessed to have gone to Dartmouth College. It's one of the most prestigious institutions in the country. So I received such a good education there and it really set the tone for how I approach business now. First job out of school was working for the National Hockey League. Not a specific team, but actually the league. I started off in event coordination, so that means kind of controlling access to different league events that we put on. That's the Winter Classic, which is a big outdoor hockey game that happens on New Year's Day, the All-Star Game, and I controlled access to those stadiums and arenas. And I still to this day like don't know how they let me do that at 22 years old, fresh out of school. But that was my first taste of real corporate America. And then from there, I realized that was more of like a back end, not client facing role. I realized quickly I'm meant to be interacting with clients, interacting with investors, things like that. So from my first events coordinator position, I transitioned over to the, the sales and marketing team where I spent the next two and a half years working with accounts that we had, partnerships, which were like Gatorade or Miller Coors, Honda, GoPro. And that's where I really learned how to become business savvy. So in full transparency, the NHL was awesome. Like I had the coolest job, but I was sort of, I felt like I was missing something. And I was like, is this it? Is this really all that's cut out for me? I also wasn't making a ton of money because at the NHL or any of these big sports leagues, you don't necessarily make a whole lot of money to start. And that's like for your first 10 years. And that's just because you're so replaceable, right? Like everyone wants to work in sports. So they kind of kept salaries in check because they knew if you left, they just find the next kid who's looking to come and work for essentially nothing. So I stuck around for a little while, but real estate's always been in the back of my mind. My dad's been a builder in the Hamptons for a long time. And I grew up on backhoes and tractors and moving dirt and building homes with him and being on the job sites with him. So my first exposure to that happened at a young age and it's always sat within me. You know, when I was thinking about what's my next move after being at the NHL for five years, got a call from one of my best friends in the world, Lexi Inglesos, who had worked for Related Development. And Related does all of the biggest multifamily buildings in all of New York City, in LA, and actually across the globe. She said that she needed someone to come and help her lease up a new building, which means rent out a new luxury building in DC. I did it. I put in my two weeks notice. A lot of people would have just remained comfortable in their job, but I said, look, I'm 25 or it's 25 or 26 at the time. If I'm gonna make a move, it's right now. If I wanna get into this real estate world, it's right now. So I did it and could not have been happier with doing that. So I moved to DC. I was moving to DC within three weeks. That was a long-winded answer, but that, <laughs> like that, I mean, goodness. it That was a full out grind for two years down in DC, baptized by fire. And then from there, I realized like, okay, this is what I wanna do. Maybe I go back to the Hamptons and try to evolve my dad's business, but also be a salesman at the same time because that's I found out that's what I'm good at. How is it filming Million Dollar Beach House with Netflix? To start, super stressful. Like, I've never spent any time on TV. I think I got interviewed after a football game once or twice at Dartmouth, and that was like the extent of my TV time. And so initially, goodness, I was pretty rough. I remember just like sweating, uh, fumbling over my words, not feeling confident or comfortable uh, for those first couple of weeks. And with anything like in life, you keep doing it like you rep it and over time it becomes more of a uh, standard routine so like overall the experience was awesome it's fun and i can always look back and be like proud of myself that i did that 
How has my life changed since the show? Ah, shit. <laughs> I've picked up an extreme amount of business uh, from being on the show, and that's like most impactful has been other brokers in other parts of the country and other luxury markets like uh, Beverly Hills or South Florida are reaching out. And a lot of those people that can't, that are in LA and they have a client are in Miami and they have a client, they're not gonna fly up to the Hamptons. They, one, they don't know the market. Two, it takes a long time to get up here and, and look at houses. So a lot of them have just been sending their clients to me, which has been really cool. So I think that trend will probably continue. So now we're gonna do a rapid fire Q&A. Real quick question, real quick answer, here we go. Favorite food, pizza. I'll eat pizza, breakfast, lunch, dinner if I could. You know what they say, once on your lips, forever on your hips. So, you gotta be careful there. Moderation, chocolate chip cookies, super dessert. I have an Australian Shepherd, his name is Oliver. He is 12 weeks old. Favorite restaurant though, I see myself, I'm always going to Balananker. Two toad cigars, pretty good too. I like them all, I like to eat. Favorite sports team, New York Jets football. So bad. New York Rangers hockey, Yankees baseball, for sure. Favorite city to visit, easy one, Miami, South Beach. It's like, I love it down there. I have a lot of buddies down there too. So it's cool to just like get down there and kick it and get on the beach and, God, I love it down there. I'm actually getting a Porsche, 2021 Porsche Cayenne. Always driven a GMC Traverse. So it's, it's, uh, it's been long overdue for an upgrade. Wow, what does my family do? My parents own a Mexican restaurant out here. It's called Sabrosa Mexican Grill. So if you ever come out here, take a, take a look, check it out, eat some tacos, really good. My dad's a builder, so we're co-owners in, with my brother also, we're tri co-owners in this uh, building company. The building company's called Andreasi Development. Two full siblings, and then I have a half sister as well. What's my favorite color? <laughs> Probably green or blue. Favorite place I've ever traveled to is like a tie between the Philippines and probably the south coast of France. Am I single? I am not. I date someone. And that someone's a female actually, so let's put the questions to bed. <laughs> Most expensive year to date sale would be 468 Edge of Woods in a watermill, which is actually one of the properties featured on the show. 6.25 million. My most expensive listing is 51 Pheasant Lane, and that's in Southampton. And that's a $21.5 million property. It's sick, it's crazy. What do I do when I'm not working? Right now it's been like taking care of the dog. You know, taking care of young Ali, who needs a lot of love and attention. I've been here for like an hour and a half. I gotta wrap this up. I have a showing down the road. So thank you guys so much for watching the first episode of my YouTube channel. This was just a kind of touch and go situation. I haven't been on camera in a long time. So thanks for bearing with me and um, always open any questions or thoughts. Shoot me a message on Instagram and looking forward to the next one. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs> All right, this will get better with time. Howdy. Talk soon. See you guys soon. Bye.